Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Tax Tips for Airbnb Hosts webinar. Uh, I'm going to kick it over now to Jose Cabral, tax expert at H&R Block. Good afternoon to you all. Good morning to others. Thank you for joining the Tax Tips for Airbnb Hosts presented to you by H&R Block. Let's go ahead and start the presentation. All right, well, H&R Block is the largest retail tax preparation organization. We've been preparing taxes in Canada for 55 years. We prepare more than 2 million tax return last year. And we have more than 1,100 locations across Canada and over 7,000 tax pros who are trained annually with more than 70 hours of tax training to put ourselves up to date every year. We offer year round tax support for all of our clients or tax associates receive, as I said, 60 to 70 hours of training each year. And H&R Block st stands behind our work with our satisfaction and maximum refund guarantee, as well as our audit assistance program. This year, we're introducing a new flat rate pricing. You can visit H&R Block um, on the Airbnb to get your coupon. You simply have to click on the link and you will be given a coupon code. When you come by the office, make sure to let us know in advance that you have a coupon so that we can make sure to uh, give you the discount on your invoice. Uh, it's a significant early bird savings. Airbnb returns require a senior tax pro and it is tre treated as a small business return, though it is officially a rental income. Each return takes about an hour and a half to two hours to complete. And there's an exclusive flat rate pricing just for Airbnb hosts. It's not available to the general public. So that's why it's very important for you to mention it in advance. Let's take a look at the price grid. Now from January 1st to March 15th, we call it the early bird. The price is $159.99 and it's an approximate saving of $155. From March 16th to April 14th, it's a mid-season. The price is $209.99, which is an approximate saving of $105. After April 14th, it's the late season. The price is $259.99, an approximate saving of $55. Take note that the coupon will be discounted from the price that you see on screen. Now let's overview what we're going to be speaking about today. How to report your income, what you can and cannot claim, capital versus current expenses, keeping a record, GST, sorry, registration, income tax installment payments, what to do if you're audited, Live questions and answer period will, of course, be at the end of the presentation. Now, unless you provide a service such as meals or laundry, your income is considered rental income, not a business, meaning that if you do offer meals and laundry, it does become also a business income. It's included with all of your other income on your T1 tax return. So it's important to file both at the same time. We use the form T776 statement of real estate rentals to calculate your net rental income. Net meaning what you earn minus the deductions, the expenses that you may have. A tax professional at H&R Block will do this for you. Now let's take a look at what expenses can an Airbnb host claim. Expenses which are incurred for both personal use and business use must be prorated. 
yearly household expenses must be prorated to determine business use. For example, utilities, insurance, property tax, and mortgage interests. Proration must be based on the amount of time that you're renting it out and the square footage if you're renting it out only a portion of your home. This is the case when you use your house as a rental, and let, we'll see that a little bit further. Now, if there's no personal use, you can claim the expenses in full. For example, cleaning your house before the guests arrive, supplies for your exclusive use for your guests. Some examples, soap, bathroom supplies, complimentary gifts such as bottled water or chocolates, repairing damages caused by careless guests. Keep in mind, it's very important that tax preparations fees. Since you now need a professional advice for record keeping and tax filing, the cost of your bookkeeping on your tax preparation fee can be fully claimed. So whatever you pay this year to file your taxes, it can be claimed on your 22 tax return, next year's tax return. Let's move on and look at capital versus current expenses. Capital properties are enduring assets such as a building, household appliances, and furniture. A repair to a property such as replacing a broken window panel is a current expense. So that can be fully claimed in the year. An improvement to your property, such as installations of energy efficient windows is a capital expense. Current expenses can be claimed in your year, like I just mentioned, but capital expenses cannot be claimed at all, all at once. Instead, there's added to the cost of your property and you can claim a percentage on each year. The rate varies depending on the type of property. This is called capital cost allowance. We're gonna be taking a look at that in a little bit. For properties purchased after November 20th, 2018 and before 2024, the accelerated investment incentive properties, you can claim 150% of the regular rate in the first year. Now let's take a look at capital cost allowance. The example that we're using here today is $10,000. The CCA rate for class eight assets, such as furniture and appliances is 20%. The first year you can claim $3,000. That's with the accelerated rate. That's 150%, the usual regular rate of 20%. The following years, you can claim 20% of the balance remaining. In the second year, you can claim 1,400, calculated as, as 7,000 times 20%. If the appliances or furnitures were used only in the part of the house that was rented out, you can claim the full CCA. If the appliances or furnitures was used partly by you and partly by your Airbnb guests, you would only claim a prorated portion of your CCA. Now that's important that you make that calculation so you know exactly what percentage you can claim. Although you are allowed to claim CCA on the building, this is not recommended because if the building sells for more than the cost plus improvements, the CCA will be recaptured in the year of the sale. You're, you'll not be allowed to claim the principal residency exemption on the property. That is why we always suggest that whatever major improvements you make to your house, you add it to your capital costs and you readjust your sell price once you sell your property. Because as just stated, if you did include those expenses on your tax return, then you'll have to recapture those the year of the sale. So you might be losing out on money in the long run. Let's take a look at how to keep your records. 
it's very important to keep good records of all your income and expenses. Receipts need to be included, a description of the goods and the service purchased. We always suggest that you take photocopies or even a picture on your cell phone of the important receipts that you spent in case those receipts fade and your file is um, verified, then if the receipt is not legible, unfortunately, you will lose out on that deduction. So keep your things organized and make sure that all receipts are legible. So if you buy paint at a hardware store, you need more than a credit card slip or an ATM. In case of verification, credit card slips and ATMs are not uh, accepted by the government. You need to have a detailed receipt of the things that you purchase, including the amount paid, as well as the date that it was purchased. Let's move on and take a look at GST registrations. Long-term uh, residential rentals are not subject to GST and HST. A long-term residential rental is basically, it's rented throughout the whole year by the same person. Short-term rentals, less than a month, are subject to GST and HST if the rent is more than $20 a day. Anything over $20 a day for the rental is subject to GST. However, you're only required to register for the GST if the taxable revenues are more than 30,000 in the last four quarters or 30,000 in any single quarter. Now, the 30,000 comes directly from your Airbnb. It does not include your personal income as a salaried worker or as an independent contractor. It's really your gains as an Airbnb host. If you are registered for the GST HST, you can claim input tax credit for the GST HST you pay on your business expenses. So in your tax, in the report that you're going to be filing, your GST report, you're going to be entering your purchases versus what you received from your Airbnb. With that, the difference is either something you have to pay or something that you will be receiving. Effective July 1st, 2021, Airbnb is required to collect and remit GST HST for you if you have not registered. If your home is used only for personal use or for long-term residential rentals, you do not charge GST on the sale. However, if your home is used 90% or more for short-term rentals, you will have to charge GST and HST. If you convert your home from personal use or use as a long-term rental to a short-term rental, you will also have to pay GST, HST on the value of your home at the time of the conversion. It's very important to keep accurate descriptions of any kind of change do, that you make to the use of your home. If you're converting it from personal to short term or to long term, keep records of the dates where you made the change in case your file gets verified so you can relay that information to the government. Airbnb has entered into occupancy tax collection agreement with the province of BC, PST and Municipal Regional District Tax, the province of Quebec, lodging tax. A number of municipal, municipalities, including Ottawa, Mississauga, Sudbury, Barrie, Windsor, Waterloo, and Brockville are, uh, are now collecting the occupancy tax collection. Airbnb adds the tax to the reservation fee. No additional paperwork is um, needs to be provided. Let now, let's take a look at installment payments. Now, as we're all aware, um, there's no tax that's withheld, income tax, let's make that clear, income tax that's being withheld at the source 
from your business income or your rental income, we should say. You may end up having a balance owing when you file your tax return. This could result in you having to pay by quarterly installment for future years. Now, the way it's calculated for installments, you're required to make installment payments only if both of the following conditions apply. Your net tax owing for the current taxation year, meaning the difference between your total tax payable and the amount withheld at the stores, will be more than $3,000. Your net tax owing for either of the two preceding years has also more than 3,000. So if in two of the three years that you filed in the past, you owed more than $3,000, the government could require you to pay installments in advance. Installments are basically an amount that you're paying to the government that will then be uh, deducted from your income tax once you file your taxes. So you're basically paying it in advance. Now, if you owe more than $3,000 on your 2021 tax return, and the same thing happens in 2022, the CRA will start asking you to pay installments in September 2022. They'll send you a letter in August explaining the different options that are available to you. Let's move on and look at audits and assessments. Even a return that's 100% accurate can be reviewed. Most audits are no longer conducted in person. You're, you just submit the requested information by mail. Now, audit is a very big word and it doesn't, it shouldn't scare people. What the CRA does is, as we mentioned, they ask you to submit additional information. They may want your paperwork, your receipts, just to make sure that the expense that you entered is accurate and that you are allowed to deduct that expense on your tax return. As long as you have the paperwork to back up your claims, you should have nothing to worry about. The important thing is to make sure you respond to the audit request by the deadline specified in the letter. It is normally 30 days, but if you feel that you don't have enough time, you simply have to contact the CRA and ask for an extension. If you're reassessed and you disagree with the auditor's decision, you can appeal the filing notice uh, by filing a notice of objection. But you have 90 days after that decision was taken to file your objection. So if you do not disagree with the decision, don't waste any time and file a notice of objection. At h &R Block, we offer a program that is called Peace of Mind. It's basically you ditch the stress of being audited with peace of mind. By purchasing the Peace of Mind Extended Service Plan, you'll have one of our professionals beside you from the moment you receive a CRA or a Revenue Quebec assessment or audit, helping you through the entire process. That is why we like to mention that we're open year round. Uh, because of that, we're capable of assisting you at any time in the year. It includes three years of coverage on audit assistance, maximum refund guarantee, audit representation, year-round support, and up to $3,000 of additional taxes. Now let's open up the floor to questions and we'll do our best to help you out with answers. Hi, Jose. So we've got a lot of questions in here about um, the GST and HST. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a couple of those questions um, from the chat. So if you don't have a GST number, uh, what, um, what are kind of the rules there, I guess, both for making over 30000 a year and under 30000 a year? Okay, well, as we stated in the presentation, as soon as you made more than $30,000 in the year or in the quarter, 
in the quarter, sorry, <laughs> you are required to get a GST number. And basically it is to your advantage as you may have more expenses than incomings, then there would be money coming back to you from filing your GST report. Okay. And um, does the 30,000 include all of that company's income or is it just related to Airbnb? Or would it be related to just 30,000 per property? Okay, if you have more than one Airbnb, of course, it is the total of all your properties. If you're making more than 30,000, it's not for your only single property. It's not per property. Uh, the 30,000 does not include your salary or if you have an additional business income as an independent contractor. It is specifically to being an Airbnb host and having an income higher than 30,000 once again in the year or. Um, in the quarter. Okay. Jose, can you turn your camera on? Of course. Perfect. Um, for people that don't uh, have an, a GST or HST number, how do they Fortunately, properly- Fortunately, I am blocked on camera. Nina needs to uh, give me access to that. Okay. Um, Sorry, I was saying, um, how do you properly calculate um, GST or HST if you if you don't have um, a number registered, but then you do end up uh, making more than thirty thousand? Okay, well, the calculation of the GST and uh, QST is basically an HST, of course, is basically what comes in versus what goes out. So what's coming in is basically, uh, what Airbnb is collecting for you as a host and what's going out is basically your expenses that you're paying out, whether it be any purchase that you're making for the Airbnb per se. As we all know, when we purchase anything from a store, we get a receipt and on the receipt, it says the amount that we paid of GST. That is another reason why it is very important to have um, your receipts and that they are legible. And that is why uh, if the CRA verifies you um, then and your receipt is not legible, then you cannot claim the deduction. Okay. And there, there's a question in here. Uh, if you're using both Airbnb and other means of having uh, rental income, that would all be the same thing. Like it doesn't matter that it's, if it's Airbnb or not, it's, the, the amount is the amount, correct? Can you go ahead and uh, repeat the question, please? There's a part that I did not hear. Sure. Um, somebody has asked, so they've got some properties that are Airbnb specifically and some rental properties that they're they're doing with another service or on their own. Um, so just confirming that whatever system they're using, whether it be Airbnb or on their own, um, the short-term rental income uh, it doesn't matter. It, it's the 30,000 for, for all short-term rentals, not just Airbnb. Yes, that is correct. One thing that's important, a recommendation that I may give to the person asking the question is that when they are filing their taxes, that they separate what is Airbnb and what is not. It'll be easier to keep track of your expenses. Following that, if you are collecting GST for your other properties, whether they be with another company, um, yes, you do have to keep track of all those expenses so that it's clear for you to be claiming your in and out. Okay. And if you made more than 30,000 uh, in one year and you and you registered for your HST, but then the next year you made less, oh, there you are. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the next year you made less than 30,000. What do you do? Do you do you need to unregister for your HST? Should you still keep it? Should you still be filing HST? No, definitely not. You don't want to unregister yourself. You want to keep on going with that. Uh, we can't really predict what's going to happen in the further years. Uh, the last thing you want to be doing is registering, unregistering, whatever, whatnot. If there was no income, then you find simply file your ins at zero because you may still have 
things that are coming out. So then you would get a reimbursement for the things that you paid out on GST and HST. Okay. And um, since Airbnb is remitting taxes on behalf of hosts, can the hosts claim the input tax credits? Yes, that is correct. That is the proper way of doing it. Keep track. Uh, Airbnb does give you a summary of what they've collected. So with that, you're capable of using that to be able to claim the difference of uh, the things that are coming that you're paying out basically. Okay. Um, there's somebody that has both short-term and long-term rentals. So some that require the GST and some that don't. Is it very clear on the, the forms or through the process to make sure you're only paying GST on the short-term versus the long-term? Or what do they need to do in order to make sure that they're not paying on something that they shouldn't be? Excuse me. Um, yes, definitely. That is why we at h &R Block emphasize on the fact that you have to keep track of everything, not only receipts, but what you're claiming. Um, keep track of which one of your properties is a long-term versus which one is a short-term. Um, make yourself an Excel worksheet. Um, make things clear. You always... Um, want to be prepared in case of a file verification. And that's the way to go about it. Keep track of everything. Great. Um, we have some questions about being Canadian uh, property owners and Airbnb hosts with properties that are either in the US or in Europe. Um, and just wondering, um, does GST apply to those properties that are outside of the country? Okay, first of all, let's take a look at United States. Uh, if you have a property in the United States or if you have any kind of goods anywhere around the world, over $100,000, when you file your tax return here in Canada, you have to fill out the T1135 and that needs to be submitted to the government. And that is whether you have income coming in or not. Um, from that point on, um, the GST, if you need to collect GST on that, of course, uh, the short answer would be no, as they are not Canadian based. Uh, but if uh, you'd like to speak to your tax specialist about the specific details to you, uh, because it all depends on the fiscal convention with the other country that you may own the property as to if you have to pay taxes or not in Canada for that. If you file in another country and there is a fiscal agreement, then you do have to declare it here, but you will not pay taxes on those amounts. Okay. Um, there's a lot of questions as well about people that are based in Ontario, but own properties in other parts of Canada. Um, I think especially within uh, Quebec, just wondering about GST versus QST and or if you have to pay both. Okay. Yes, it all depends on the province of residence. Uh, the first thing, let's look at Canada. Canada-wide pays GST. So there's a GST report that's due across Canada. Ontario, HST. Quebec, GST. If you live in Quebec and you register for GST, QST, you're basically filing your report to Revenue Quebec, and then Revenue Quebec gives that information to Revenue Canada. So you only have one report to file. The same goes for every other province. But what is important is that the GST is across Canada. Okay. There are um, some questions in the chat that are, um, I think, more suited for Airbnb to answer versus H&R Block, specifically about um, Airbnb uh, taking off the GST, HST. Um, so I, I don't know that we can necessarily get into all of those details and that might be better for um, Airbnb to answer. Um, but one question is how will um, these hosts know when and where and how much Airbnb has, has um, included for HST? Will that be made clear? Do you think there are forms? Uh, Every year? Sure? Every year, they are supposed to receive a summary of any um, on that summary is basically what they've earned, 
uh, versus what's been collected for GST, HST, QST, whichever one it may be. If so, uh, they did not receive it, that is something that you should definitely ask Airbnb to help you out with. Great. Um, there's also questions here about taxes for property renters versus owners. So if they're a host and they're renting out short term a property that they don't own, but rather they rent from a landlord versus a property that they own, what do, do they need to know in terms of their taxes? Well, basically, uh, the rent that you pay to the owner then becomes a deduction. So basically, it's the amount that you're receiving from Airbnb is your income. And then the amount that you pay for rent becomes a deduction as well as any other um, fees or things that you may have purchased. Those are also deductions. Just make sure once again, that everything is clear and that you have receipts for everything. Okay. Um, there's also some questions here about um, the types of things that you're able to uh, claim. So the expenses that you're able to claim or to deduct. Um, one of the specific questions was about holiday decorations and if they can be claimed. As long as they're being used for your Airbnb and it's a reasonable expense, the word reasonable expense is always important in the things that you pay, uh, that you purchase. Uh, luxury items and things like that should not be claimed. Um, but basically, yes, as long as it's for your rental and also um, if part of your house is being used for Airbnb and the other part is being used for personal, only the, the, the pro rata or the, the portion that is being used for the Airbnb may be deducted. So if it's 50-50, then 50% of the, uh, of the expense may be deducted. Okay, great. Um, people are also asking about CCA for furniture and appliances, um, especially if they're using existing items, they wanna just make sure that um, that wouldn't qualify, it's only on new purchases. That is correct. Uh, new purchases uh, that are made for the rental income. <coughs> Excuse me. Just gonna turn off my camera for a moment. <laughs> Sorry, it's that time of the year where we all have a cough. <laughs> um, sure. Okay, new purchases may be added on as CCA. Uh, old purchases, basically what I'm going to answer, I'm going to give you a short answer and it's refer to the CRA website for additional information on CCA or more than, better than that, speak to your tax specialist. Your tax specialist is there to guide you throughout all these purchases, deduction, expenses, and all that. Great. Um, for people who outsource things like cleaning or property management, um, how do those incurred costs reflect in their taxes? Yes, once again, those are things that are deductible. And basically, you basically just have to claim it on your income tax. You have to have that person has to give you a receipt. And with that receipt, you can claim it as a deduction on your income taxes. Okay. Um, now that Airbnb is uh, collecting GST, um, for people that are registered with their own GST number, uh, what is kind of the, what happens there? Okay. Well, basically what I'm going to answer is that um, depending on your province, it's always best to ask those questions to Airbnb so that you're sure that you're getting um, that you're claiming the right amounts. So speak to Airbnb about that so that you don't end up losing money, leaving money on the table. And you wanna make sure that when you file your GST, HST, QST report, that it is accurate. The government does not like corrections. If you are correcting a GST report, you know, the chances are you will be verified and they will ask additional questions. So if, Anything, any kind of doubt you may have, speak to Airbnb regarding your summary or regarding what they have collected for you on GST. Great. Um, is there a simple way to distinguish between 
current expenses and capital expenses, especially with some very minor things like um, cabinetry and painting, or then major things like upgrades to plumbing and electrical or a new roof. Um, there is a list of uh, what can be uh, what the difference is on the CRA website, or you can speak to your tax specialist about that. Basically, anything major is capital costs. Anything small is basically deductible in the year. So paint would be something that you could definitely deduct in the year. Cabinets also. Uh, but it all depends on the price that you're paying for them. So that's another thing to look at. Uh, refer to your tax specialist or to the CRA website. Okay. And there, there are some questions just to clarify how to determine the, the portion of a rental space that's used by Airbnb versus your own um, dwelling. Well, the right way to go about calculating things is literally the square footage, the square footage of your total house versus the uh, square footage of personal as well as rental. Uh, the short version is uh, the number of rooms in the house, but the proper way of calculating things is the square footage, what is being used for rental versus what is the total. Okay. Somebody has asked, um, if they're the one that is cleaning their Airbnb suite, um, could they claim that amount as an expense? If you're cleaning yourself, only yeah. the supplies that are being used may be deducted as a deduction on your income taxes, unless you're paying yourself a salary, which is not the case as your main salary is being an Airbnb host. Okay. Um, I think there's also some questions in here about when Airbnb starts collecting GST, if it was in 2021 or in 2022. I think that's similar to what you have answered, Jose, that um, the host should check with Airbnb and they should also be getting a, a receipt of some sort, a, a, an overview from Airbnb of what's been collected and what hasn't. Yes, that is correct. And effective as of now, they are collecting. So Make sure to inform yourself, put yourself in the best of situations and know what's being collected on your behalf. Okay. Um, we're getting close to the end of the questions. Um, somebody has asked if you can go to any H&R block to do Airbnb taxes. Yes, of course, any H&R block uh, will be able to help you out. Uh, what's important is that it's a senior tax specialist that's helping you out with that. What's uh, let the person at the reception know or when you're calling in that you are an Airbnb host and that you have a coupon code, very important to let the person know that you have a coupon code before they start the work as the coupon code will reflect on your invoice. Okay. And um, some people, uh, we got another question that was um, a U.S. citizen who lives in the U.S. but has a rental property in Canada. Um, how do they manage the Canadian taxes? I am not personally a U.S. specialist. I am aware of how it works when you live in Canada and have a property in the States. The best bet is to speak to your H&R Block specialist in the US and they will be able to let you know how it works. But you can only assume that once again, it's the same thing. Uh, if you pay taxes in another province, you uh, in another country, then you should not have to pay taxes in your country of residence as long as there is a fiscal convention, but the amounts do have to be declared and you do have to file taxes in the country that you have your rental property. Okay. Um, there's some chatter uh, in the chat box just about the Airbnb collecting um, HST. It looks like it's not starting until July 2022, um, according to some people in the chat. But again, that's really more of a question or a, a liaison with Airbnb just to make sure um, that you know exactly what is being collected and when. That is correct. Just be aware of everything 
This is information that you can clearly get from Airbnb. They're the ones who are taking care of you as an Airbnb host. So know what's being collected on your behalf. As uh, you know, as we stated in the presentation, $30,000 and more, you do have to file a report. So just know what's being done on your behalf. And um, in terms of collecting GST for properties that are over 30,000, is this a new requirement of uh, the CRA or has this been going on for years? I think there's some people that maybe haven't paid GST on their property income of over 30,000 and are just wondering kind of how far back they need to look into, um, into that. Basically, any kind of independent work, whether it be a rental income, a business income, that is a law that you are supposed to collect taxes on over $30,000, that you are supposed to have a tax number and file reports. If they have not contacted you up to now, it's because your file has not been deeply verified. Um, keep in mind, you are supposed to keep any records, whether it be personal taxes, income, uh, business taxes, rental income, you are supposed to keep all documents for six years. So for six years, you may be verified. So keep all your documents very well organized and don't throw out your documents just because you filed your taxes. You are required to keep your documents for six years in case of verification. Okay, uh, there are some questions coming up in the chat that we've answered. So I, I uh, recommend that everybody check out H&R Block Canada's YouTube page where you'll be able to find this webinar again. Um, and so you can just go through it. And I think a lot of the questions that are being asked will be answered either through that beginning presentation or throughout the QA. Um, I'm just going to uh, give you a couple more questions, Jose, and then we can wrap this up. Um, somebody has mentioned that they did some renovations on their property in 2020, but they didn't rent it out until 2021. Can they claim the renovation expenses in terms of paint and supplies from 2020 on their 2021 return? Definitely not. Uh, even if you did not have any income in 2020, your expenses need to be entered in 2020. So basically your rental income would be in the minus um, for 2020, but it has to be declared in 2020. Only current year expenses may be claimed in the current year. You cannot carry forward any expenses. Okay, and so if they've already filed their 2020 taxes, could they... Um... They could, could they file an back? adjustment. Yep, they okay. can go back to their 2020 taxes and basically declare their rental income. In this case, there would be no income. It would only be expenses. And that would also correct uh, their income taxes. With that, uh, the name of the form that they need to fill, fill out is a T1ADG. So T1 adjustment. And then that would correct your file. Okay. Um, and when they're claiming expenses, is that uh, like, let's say it's their cleaning supplies and they buy it from their local uh, grocery store. Um, are they claiming the amount before taxes or after taxes? Okay, you're basically claiming your amount with taxes. Um, with this question, I want to mention that it's better, it's always better in any kind of situation that anything that is purchased for um, your rental income be on a separate receipt than anything that's being purchased personal. Then it makes it that much easier to keep track of the expense and the tax paid on the expense. Keep your things separate, uh, personal, uh, not personal, excuse me, yeah, personal home and what is being used for your Airbnb. Okay. Um, someone here owns an Airbnb with a relative. So let's say it's a, a mother and a daughter that own mm -hmm. a property, um, but only one name. Um, is there a way to sort of split the reporting of the income? Yes. When you're going to be filling out your uh, rental income on your income taxes, at the bottom of the form, there is a question that states if you uh, own it with anybody else. 
on there, you're going to indicate the name of the other person and the percentage, as well as the social insurance number of the other person. Now, I do recommend that one person file and that indicate the 50%. Let's use 50% as an example. They'll indicate 50% that is owned by somebody else. Print out the T, um, the form that for the rental income and then give it to the other person. So then you are sure that both income taxes match and that you're both claiming the same amount of percentages, income versus deductions. Okay. Um, and someone's asking if there is a new rule that everyone must have a GST number by July, 2022. All these informations about GST, they were given, they're being sent out by Airbnb. Um, as we stated in the presentation, you can refer to it on our YouTube page. It is not required before 30K, but once again, read the fine prints, read the details to the agreement that you signed with Airbnb. Okay, and I think the last question here um, is if you can claim, um, if you can claim your home office. So I'm thinking they're asking as a as their kind of business operations hub, can their home office be claimed um, as a as part of their business through through their well, rentals? Yeah, basically a rental income is not a business income. Uh, if you're reasonable in your expenses, yes, you may go ahead and claim it but make sure not to double your expenses. If it's you're already claiming things as an Airbnb, don't claim it as a deduction for your home office and make sure that it is truly a home office that you're being used. If you're using a home office once a year to file your taxes, then I suggest that you don't use any kind of deductions because it is your duty like everyone else to file taxes. That's why it's I strongly recommend be organized throughout the year so that once you do file your taxes, it's not overwhelming. That's so great. Thank you very much, Jose. And again, Thank to you. to everybody who's joined us here, um, this presentation will be available on h and Block Canada's YouTube page. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I think a lot of the questions um, that have been coming through in the chat will be answered if you uh, if you're able to watch this presentation again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a great rest of your day.